Today we're going to be talking about something that you might not have heard of about before. We've got learning and now we're going to talk about micro learning. Here with me today is somebody who is in my Accent Teachers Academy and she's been there for a while. She's also a client because it's something that she's working on for herself and she loves to be in our community and she loves to share our knowledge. So today we have Margarita who is talking to us about micro learning, why we need it especially, what exactly it is, and then we're going to talk about the subject of asynchronous micro learning and how we can put those together. She's going to share some stories about her own experiences. And then we're going to say, okay, what about the app Telegram? How can we use that to apply micro learning and asynchronous learning? So if you're a teacher and you're wondering about how to get started with these ways of teaching, you're going to find today really valuable. I'm Bianca, your personal American accent coach, and I'm here to help you master an American accent in English because your voice is your choice when it comes to how you sound. I try to release a podcast episode every two weeks, and so you should really subscribe to whatever podcast platform you use so that you don't miss the newest episode. And by the way, if you want to see the full video of the episode, it's available at Accent Coach Bianca on YouTube. Now, let's get on with the show. Woohoo! I'm super excited to finally get you on here to talk about micro learning and telegram because it's like the only thing we've been talking about recently in our teachers club so welcome back it's not your first time i want to introduce margarita who i've known for a while and i see her all the time but you guys listening to this might not know her at all unless you've listened to a previous episode that featured her so i'm gonna let margarita introduce herself a little bit again and that way you'll get to know her and how we know each other so margarita go um, ahead and tell us a little bit about uh, you hi guys my name is margarita i'm an english teacher from russia and I use micro learning for my teaching and also go to Bianca's awesome club, both with teachers and for excellent training. Yeah. Uh, yeah okay. Now I, how long? We each other about a year? No. A, yeah. I, I think it's been exactly a year because I joined your club last February. Probably. Yeah. But, huh. Yeah. I used to go to your office hours only. Yeah. And then maybe in July. I joined everyone else and didn't regret it at all. Totally yeah. recommended. Yeah. I, I think one thing I love about having you there too, there's like a consistency too that anybody can show up at any time. And sometimes we'll see you and sometimes we'll see other teachers and somebody's maybe on vacation or traveling or something. And so it's nice because you're almost always there. So there's a consistency there too that kind of helps the community, which I really love. So I want to say thanks for coming again to participate in this. Mm -hmm. And yeah, really recently, all the teachers in the club have been interested in this idea of micro learning and getting to use Telegram more and the idea of synchronous versus asynchronous classes. So we were like, you know what, this would be a great time to put all that together in a podcast and tell people what we mean when we say that, because all of us are going to be coming out with courses, you included, that include all of these things. And so for, whether it's for us, whether it's for accent training, whether it's about baking bread, any course you take could be about micro learning learning let me say that again could be about micro learning so let's start with that what micro learning can you describe it for us basically it's chopping up information into bite-sized chunks so that you can learn for 20 15 minutes a day but on a regular basis and there are studies which show that it's better for you in the long run because okay if you learn only once a week you can forget about uh, English or baking or whatever you're learning between those days. And maybe the night before you might be like, oh my God, what was there? I have homework. I don't remember anything. But if the last lesson was yesterday, you will have an easier time recalling what it was. And you can just start from where you finished earlier and it will be much easier on you. So as... So like that reminds me of when I was in school and high school and I was taking like a French class and I think our language classes weren't very intensive, at least at my school. So we had, I think, French once a week or mm -hmm. twice or maybe three times a week. But I remember the first like 15 minutes of each class was, do you remember what we were doing last week? Let's review last week. Let's review the homework. And you don't remember what you did for that homework. And I think it, it, as an adult as well, I try to batch a lot of things that I do. And one of the things that I think is counterproductive in language is if I try to smash everything together once a week, right? It's not, mm -hmm. it's almost, I guess it's almost like exercise in a way. Wouldn't it be better yeah. to, yeah, to spread out and have more like regularity in that and repetition 
in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think th things are changing and we're learning more about that. So maybe tell us a little bit more about how you how you see the structure of that, like how much per week? I have a lot of students who want one hour per week, but we cut that hour into 15 minute slot. So 15 minutes uh, for four days. We use maybe Monday to Thursday or Tuesday to Friday, and we meet every day. And then there is this part where I might give or not give homework because mm -hmm. personally, as a student, I love a flipped classroom and I uh, get annoyed if I'm forced to show up and then do something I could have done on my own. Mm -hmm. And I probably attract the same kind of people who are like, okay, why, why would we do that together? I could have done it alone. And I can give them little tasks, maybe which would take 15 minutes to, so you get half an hour of studying if you have 15 minutes at home plus 15 minutes of a call with me, if we're doing like the synchronous way, because as I will tell you later, it can be asynchronous too. And yeah, it can work for some people or mm -hmm. not for everyone. A little disclaimer, if you can't force yourself to do something. Sometimes it's better to have a call tomorrow with your teacher and you're going to feel bad if you don't do anything, if you show up without doing anything, you, know, you, may, you might be ashamed and that can force you into doing something. But uh, for, for others, it's not an obstacle and they work better this way. A and also like, you can have a deadline. Okay, I have to do something before tomorrow because I need to send it to my teacher, to my to the person who will check it. And then I can get feedback uh, during a call where I can get that uh, as a video or audio message. So it could work too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and like, oh yeah. No, I, I want to no, point no, out okay. what you said, which was, which is really, it's really important what you said, which is, this is not a method that works for everybody. There is no mm -hmm. single method that works for everybody, but for some mm -hmm. people, this really hits home and it's exactly what they need. And I like what you mentioned too about, oh, me as a teacher, I sometimes attract these students that kind of, that like to learn in the same style that I like to learn and that I like to teach. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also really important to remember too, because I think it's the same thing with me is you end up finding the people who are very similar to you and have similar thoughts about learning and mm -hmm. processes and things like that. So absolutely. If this isn't for you, good luck and have, have find the person that works well with you. But a lot of us are finding that this works for us, like you said, you as a student of language, and maybe when mm -hmm. we talk more about asynchronous learning, we'll talk about the Chinese class that you're taking as well yeah. and how that kind of fits in on both sides. Us, we are also learners and we have to remember that, that we've been in those shoes and when we find something that works for us, it's really nice to, to share that as well. So we're finding a lot about mm -hmm. this micro learning could be like 10, 15 minutes a day, maybe four times, a, four times that week or three times. Like you said, it depends on the person. I have a question about that though. Yeah. When you have somebody who for, let's say, 15 minutes on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or mm -hmm. four, or those five days per work week, let's say, mm -hmm. do you ever run into scheduling issues? Like, and maybe it's cultural where, oh God, I've got this 15 minute call. Ah, but my meeting is running late. And then they push maybe that call with you back, but you've got a call with another client later. Does scheduling become an issue because they're tiny chunks of time for you? It happens, but it happens rarely. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe it's a part of the personality type I attract or, or something, because usually we have like a certain time for yeah. a person. It is set in stone and they protect that time slot. They protect this and they're like, no, like I, I have a guy who has a senior managerial position and sometimes he just stops uh, meetings with his workers and says, no, I have English now. Let's continue in 15 minutes. So, mm -hmm. uh, unless uh, his boss calls him, right? His private English time. Right. But overall, I, I think there are no big issues. And usually I, I set some time aside uh, at my break. And uh, okay, if there is someone who is like running late, but uh, is determined to have a call. Yeah. And I might push them to a later time or do it another day. But if this person is disciplined, but has maybe internet connection issues because uh, that person's traveling or has moved abroad and we have a big difference because of the time zones, we could totally do everything the asynchronous, asynchronous way, which is like on my part, I give the task and on the student's part, there will be a written exercise or maybe if it's speaking, 
but not a dialogue, a little monologue, they can send me an audio or make a video message. It's very easy to do on Telegram, which I use as my main messenger. Like they can send me a video and uh, I can listen to that and I can uh, correct the mistakes and send my feedback like this. So we don't have to actually meet at the same time because, okay, that person might have the time at 8 a.m. and I wake up at 10 and uh, then I have the time to check the message like at 10 p.m. and that person is asleep already. They wouldn't be able to connect. But like this, using the modern technology, it's not an issue anymore. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And it reminds me of a phrase that, that we say a lot. We say the first part of the phrase sometimes, but not always the second part. And most people know the phrase less is more. Less is more, uh -huh. but they forget that the less has to be more, meaning the quality has to be there, right? And, and I think when you do these little chunks of things, excuse me, when you do these little chunks of things, for me that my, my live times with a person or a group it's sacred, right? Like you said, mm -hmm. you get annoyed if you show up and there's a task that you totally could have done on your own, right? You, or you mm -hmm. will, you can do on your own and you would do on your own. And, and then you show up and th that's not the case. For me, it's really important not to do those things because that time is sacred. And then when mm -hmm. you cut down the time, even though it's repeated, to me, it's even more sacred. So mm -hmm. I totally get what you're saying about those kinds mm -hmm. of things. And was there something that you wanted to say about, you? let's talk now about a flipped classroom and maybe quickly define it for people who don't know what that is. And then something about you had, you had a story to tell about somebody complaining about videos. Yeah, basically a flipped classroom is when to avoid the situation I mentioned before, you just give a video to watch at home or an article to read at home. And then the students comes prepared and you can discuss, or maybe you can do some exercises based uh, on what has been read, what has been watched. And uh, it really saves the time. And also uh, the student doesn't have to sit with you and you don't have to silently wait for them to finish watching or finish reading. Mm -hmm. And at least in my eyes, it's more effective mm -hmm. like this. Yeah, yeah, you just let them prepare and then they can feel that every minute they paid for is used effectively. And I mentioned that on Instagram, so in one of my stories, and one of my students texted me that, yeah, this is what happened uh, with the last teacher before me. And she, she said, okay, I paid uh, a lot of money. And then we sat uh, together and then we watched something for 30 minutes or like out of an hour I, I paid for. Why couldn't I have watched that uh, YouTube video by myself? Oh, I would be livid. I would be livid. I can see when watching a video together would be beneficial. Let's say you're doing analysis, right? Let's say it's you and I, and we're talking about accents and we have, we, maybe we want to catch something. This happens a lot in our feedback club, right? Somebody, William will bring a video that he just did and we could each watch it on our own and then each take notes and then come back and compare notes. But sometimes I think for us anyway, the way we structure things, when we watch a little video live together, we've got everybody's input all at the same time. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, let's call it homework, where, mm -hmm. oh, here's the thing that I want you to do on your own, student. Yeah, then do it outside of class. For one mm -hmm. thing, for one thing, like you said, this word effective keeps popping up. So much more effective. They might feel like they're wasting their time. You also mm -hmm. said it too. You're sitting there waiting for somebody to finish an article or something like that. You can also get bored as the mm -hmm. teacher too. It's both people are there. And then the other thing that it made me think of is, let's say, let's go back to the beginning where we said, ah, traditionally you spend one big chunk of time on language, but that's not how we use language generally, right? We often switch back and forth throughout the week, throughout the day. So this idea of switching back and forth for smaller chunks of time is actually more authentic in how we use languages too. So I think that all of that mm -hmm. goes together, like we said, to, to make your learning, I think, a lot more effective. And, and like mm -hmm. we said, flip, flipping the classroom is like a, how should I say, it's a theory? No, it's a method that's been used there a lot. And so we can now integrate these two things. And like you said, it's not like we have to just make this commitment and always do micro learning, but maybe somebody is traveling and they only have this one chunk of time that week and you go back and forth. And I think that flexibility that can exist there can be really helpful for a lot of people. No. Yeah. 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 Uh, absolutely. And I think if you do it asynchronously, I would 
recommend like meeting, like having a call from time to time. And you might have an agreement that if there is a problem, your students can request a call where mm -hmm. you decide, oh, every week we have one call, 15 minutes call to discuss everything we've learned where every two weeks or every month you can check in depending on your students' needs, really. Mm. And depending on what you're learning, how you're learning it, because like we're talking ab about it in very broad terms, but mm. actually uh, we would need to like check what the student needs right now and think about what can be done uh, yeah, to help absolutely. us first. Yeah. Uh, let's expand on that too and maybe define synchronous mm -hmm versus asynchronous learning, whether it's micro learning or I don't know what the other one would be macro learning, but yeah. let's quickly define when we say synchronous and asynchronous, what does that look like to other people? Can you give a little example, maybe using your own experience as a learner? I would say if we are on a call right now, we're doing it synchronously. So we mm -hmm. could have uh, an English lesson here, but if we exchange video messages, video messages, and there would be like delays between or back and forth, that would be asynchronous. Like mm -hmm. it, it would be an asynchronous, con an, as an asynchronous conversation or mm -hmm. like we could have the, our tasks sent from the teacher and then the replies, the attempts to do those tasks by the students and uh, it works just as well. Yeah. And the thing that comes to mind too is like how I have things structured now is that I, as like I have clubs, right? And we meet yeah. synchronously. Everyone's there in person, right? If somebody's not there because they're sick or they're traveling or something like that, then we can watch the video replay later. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I'm not, in my case anyways, I don't assign like homework that somebody mm -hmm. has to do or pre-work, like you were saying mm -hmm. to the flip flipping of the classroom. Because why? Because for me, what I have are clubs and not what I would call classes. And mm -hmm. then the other thing is, I think what we're both going to also talk about too is the uh, an idea of a course now or maybe perhaps mm -hmm. a challenge where people are doing more kind of on their own and maybe just checking in once in a while i think that's what you mean right more of a format mm -hmm. like that yeah yeah i would say so but in my case it's very tailor-made because uh, i'm always asking like what do you do for work and what do you need english for and it turns out that that all students are different and they ha they might have different needs so I have a textbook I use, uh, like a couple of textbooks I like, and I might offer, would you like just a, a general course, a general course of English because you have B1, we, we, we need B2. And we just work on everything, like uh, using those tasks. But more often than not, they have very specific needs and we start reading different kinds of technical guides or medical documentation or something like something from the work. Uh, they they need right now where we work on specific situations from their life and so i adapted uh, to that mm -hmm. and it, it's actually very interesting but hard to do because you basically design tasks for that person depending on their mood uh, what they're doing where they're at uh, and so on and yeah. you make the tasks and then you send them to them where if you do the synchronous way of learning it's like asking what would you like to do what's the priority for this week and we work together mm. actually i would say that i like to collaborate with my students and i think maybe it's uh, uh, a feature which attracted me uh, to your clubs because you don't force me you don't make me read some uh, text that you chose you're like okay you can bring whatever you want and then uh, you can choose the priority we are going to work on and uh, then you give me feedback focusing on that thing. And uh, this is what I like to do too, because I work with adults and they have specific needs and I don't want to take all, mm, it's not about responsibility, but I don't want to take 100% of the responsibility mm. for their results because maybe they have their own ideas. Maybe they know from their previous experience, how it was with their other teachers, what they would like to avoid, what they would like to do. And we decide together. And I think it gives the best results when you yeah. have some say in your yeah. fate. Yeah. And some people are not, like you said, some people are not used to that. And mm -hmm. they've been held by the hand their whole life in terms of learning and education. And they, maybe they want some say, but maybe don't even know that's a possibility. So giving them um, a, a way to just at least think about that and say, hey, what are your priorities, right? 
Maybe nobody's ever even asked them that question. And it's a little difficult at first, but getting somebody Mm -hmm. to the point where they can say what's important to them, it's like maybe a little thing, but it's actually a really big thing in some places, in some Mm -hmm. cultures, in some educational styles is we say it like, oh, it's no big deal. But for some people, it's a really big deal. They've never even thought about it. So getting, getting onto that might take a little bit of effort. Like you said, it's not easy. (laughs) None of this stuff Mm -hmm. is meant to be necessarily easier, but it's meant to give more, how should we say, it's supposed to give you more bang for your buck, basically, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea is by spreading this out, you get a more realistic approach back and forth. Like you said, too, you're totally right. I didn't really uh, hit on this. I was thinking in very general terms, like these courses that you might buy on some of these big platforms that sell DIY video courses, they're asynchronous, right? And you might or might not Mm -hmm. get any feedback with them. But what you're saying is how, look at how personalized it can be, right? When you, you're, I was thinking along the line of a course with a small group, but you're saying that you do this even with your one-on-one students, right? You're doing this Mm -hmm. asynchronous micro learning that is tailored to each individual student, right? Which doesn't Mm -hmm. take you any less time, that's for sure, but it's way more meaningful to, to the people involved. And to you too, I think you get a lot of satisfaction out of that. And when you find something, you often bring something, you say, oh, I found this article that I'm using with my students now. And I'd also like this, like to use this for myself to read out loud or, hey guys, I'm reading this book and I think you'd find it interesting too. And I think doing that makes it more meaningful for everybody. Yeah, I really, I'm really getting on the asynchronous (laughs) track right now too. And and something I like about it is the timing as well. Maybe you can talk about your Mandarin class now about how like, how that's fitting into your life now. Yeah, uh, basically, I have just transitioned from one school and their way of teaching into another one, which has an asynchronous course I'm taking now. Uh-huh. So basically, I, I went. Yeah, yeah, I went from a more traditional way when I had two 60 minute classes per week, mm-hmm. and we would mm, revise for maybe half an hour and re- we would play a game. So basically, there's a group of students on zoom watching the teacher play a game like uh, we can choose a number and then she opens a card and we need to translate and i get leave the card but i could have done it myself because i could just use a quizlet and yeah i could have come yeah or yeah or anki or i don't know like paper cards whatever Yeah. yeah i could i could have done it on my own but then i could have come half an hour later and started with the new material. On the one hand, I get where they're coming from. And if the student does nothing and wants to do nothing, maybe it's a good way of doing it. But I didn't see why I I needed to fit there. And we also watched videos in there. It it was funny because it was a bit outdated. It was about Harry Potter 3 premiere. And it, it was made in 2004. And two of my group mates are younger than that. <laughs> so <laughs> I remember that time, but they don't. And the characters in the video used a landline phone and a dial-up internet to call their, to see when the premiere was and to call their friend. And then they tried to meet up. And I was like, okay, could you have maybe chosen anything newer? Because mm-hmm. I tried to use the latest materials of my students. As, as you mentioned, I take articles which are like two days old and then we have this old school thing it's not it's not like nobody uses mandarin it since 2004 yeah yeah there's no new materials out there to use mandarin oh mandarin's a dead language like latin not exactly like it should be easy enough to update those things it reminds me of like like school right when when i was in high school and first of all you're you're in the building all day it's like teenage jail and you're there and you're forced to be there And at that time, teachers were trying to do their best and they were trying to make things fun and maybe show videos and things like that to this kind of captive audience that didn't really want to be there anyways. And so that was tough. But now, not only are you and I, we're adults and we're teaching in this kind of new age, but also our students are are adults. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. I, I don't really take anybody who's not an adult, but partly because of that too, partly to make it more personalized and to bring people up to speed. With these things because i think a lot of education at least in my day and age was like a bit traumatic and like <laughs> learning wasn't fun and now learning should be about what we want to learn and what i want to learn and what i want to get out of those things so mm-hmm. it sounds like doing this and chopping it up makes it more meaningful makes it more memorable 
And now what are you, what's your new Mandarin class like? And how is that different? Oh, it's asynchronous. I get short videos with some grammar and I'm taking a phonetics course too. So some pronunciation tips. And then I just watch the video and they have the tasks and you need to repeat while watching, like a, a bit of shadowing. And then you get a task in a special Telegram channel for this course. And you can uh, record yourself and send your recording to the teacher's DMs also on Telegram. So very easy for me because I use this messenger all the time. So I have my friends, my like students there, and then I just switch in there and just listen to something on the school's Telegram. And then I record myself and send it to my teacher. And then I get feedback as an audio or as a video, maybe something, a little text saying, oh, it's great, but you could work on like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in general, I think that's the way for me. From the teacher's side, it could be tricky because as we mentioned before, I tend to make uh, everything tailor-made and, oh, this person likes this singer and there's news about that. Or, oh, this person works uh, in this sphere and there's this event in the industry. Oh, I need to discuss that. So it would take me more time to, to do that. And also, I think from the teacher's point of view, you need to limit the amount of feedback you give because mm -hmm. you can overdo it. Yeah, I can yeah. uh, continue answering uh, for a long time. So uh, that's the tricky part, but I think Focused. it's manageable. Yeah, that's a really good point about, so um, um, what I'm envisioning now is how you're describing this is like proximity. I'm thinking about one-on-one -on -one is very close, mm -hmm. right? You have a very deep relationship with those one-on-one -on -one students. And then you've got small groups, right? Not mm -hmm. to say that it's any less deep, but it's, it's also divided a little bit, right? Because you're seeing everybody. And then you've got these things where it's more of a course or a challenge or a sprint, some people call it, right? Where you don't have as much, let's say, contact with them, at least mm -hmm. personally, right? But it feels, it feels like in this way, even asynchronously, you can get a, a deeper feeling of contact with people. Because even if you have a large group, if you're sending personal feedback to somebody, even if you're not together there at the same exact time, then you still feel connected, I think, to that person. So here's another aspect, mm -hmm. I think, that asynchronous and microlearn can, can keep us into contact or give, give us a better feeling of contact with our mm -hmm. teachers, even if it's not a one-on-one -on -one class, right? Most people mm -hmm. want to do that one-on-one -on -one class because they want that contact, they want that closeness. But I think now we're saying we can feel just as close with a group of people and just be careful. Maybe if you're a teacher doing this, be careful of maybe your, your boundaries, your focus, your attention, and maybe mm -hmm. not, don't let yourself overdo it. Cause I think we can all no. easily go overboard, but you just yeah. mentioned like our third big topic, which we're talking about, and it might sound silly, but I do want you to define telegram. I know that sounds silly, but think about people in the U S who barely even use WhatsApp sometimes. So mm -hmm. some of them know WhatsApp, a lot of them don't even know telegram. So can we maybe start with the differences of both? Telegram is a popular messenger, is the most popular messenger in Russia. It has some of the WhatsApp functions. I would say it was, it has all of the WhatsApp functions plus more. And there is a premium version you could buy, but it's mostly free. So most of, most of the features are free and you can just download it and give it the access to your contacts and you will have everyone who has Telegram too. And usually for me, that's a lot of people instantly. And it is used by everyone. So I have chats with my friends. If I take any kind of a course, there is a chat for that. I have chats, what's happening in my city, dance chats. The Hermitage Museum, it's kind of like our Louvre, has its own Telegram channel too. I follow and find out all the news. So it's, yeah, news channels, lots of other things in there. So, yeah, probably your chat with the neighbors, like in your building is there too. Mm -hmm. Also, whose cat is this? Have you seen my cat? And they will <laughs> find each other. Lots and lots of things. And it can be used for learning too. Mm -hmm. So not only for keeping it in touch with your friends. And some big companies have a Telegram bot, which answer your questions. So you, you, huh? depending on how you program it, it, huh? it can be useful too. I, I haven't tried it for myself, but I know that some people actually make them for selling stuff. If you buy something, you can get uh, the instant access to a Telegram bot and then you can just choose the options and get, get stuff done. Uh, oh, actually I have taken, I wouldn't say it's, it was a real course, a little 
mini or micro course by a girl who actually teaches teachers. So like she helps them make their own products. So she had this magical packaging for it. She was like, okay, do you want to do some magic? You can buy my webinar like this. And uh, I paid for it and I got into her bot and I had to tap some buttons. And then there was like a little magical experience. She used some like emojis, stickers to look at, to make it look more magical. And she had a YouTube video in there. So you don't have to leave Telegram to watch it. And then there were some like magical features after that. You could get some extra files. You could get some extra stuff. It's a bit more advanced. Even for me, I I just do everything manually for now. But uh, yeah, it could be uh, used to in in the future. Yeah, and that's the reason that I wanted to quickly review what this is. Because believe it or not, there's a lot of people that would be listening to this. They're like, tell a what? Tell a who? And maybe they know WhatsApp as a messenger of a service. But Telegram is so much more. And I one thing I like to do is to introduce kind of people to things they, that are incredibly useful. They might not know about, for example, oh, we talk about Discord, right? A lot of people mm-hmm. don't know Discord. One thing it's so wonderful about, one thing that's so wonderful about Discord is it's like a mishmash of different things. And it's the same it's true of Telegram, I feel. Like you said, anybody can use it. It can be, where's my cat? There's suspicious activity in my neighborhood. There, it can be all the way to big corporations, right? It can be very personal. It can be very generic. It can, it's, it's all these things. And it's got so many things built into it. You don't necessarily need to pay for the, the premium version. Of course, the premium version is even better. But there's whole areas of the world that are using this thing that I think people listening to this might not even know. It's mm-hmm. huge in India. Like you said, it's huge in Russia. I'm looking at the statistics now. Indonesia, United States, but when I think of the United States, I think it's a lot of people who travel internationally, right? People who already have a lot of experience with these things, who may or may not be listening to this. Brazil, Egypt, I'm looking at this, Vietnam, Mexico. There's tons, there's millions and millions of people that are using this app that a lot of people don't even know. And one way that we can use it besides all that other stuff is like you said, courses, maybe mini courses, maybe mm-hmm. micro courses. Can you tell us a little bit about how how you've experienced a course there or how maybe you're going to use it for yourself? Because this is something that we in my teachers club have been talking about a lot. And okay, how am I going to structure it? What am I going to do here? And a lot of kind of questions are coming up on the creator side, on our side of this. But maybe start with any experience that you've had as a learner using a course, yeah. getting a course on Telegram. Yeah, absolutely. About my Mandarin class, they have a channel and a chat. Basically, these are the, the two forms of, I don't know how to call it, like or two things you could create on Telegram. Yeah, yeah you maybe could how, have... how it's maybe the organizational structure, right? We've got mm-hmm. channels, which are for broadcasting, basically. Yeah. And then the chatting, I, I like to think of it as the other side of the coin, is the chatting part is for people who want to maybe have a discussion about what's in the mm-hmm. broadcast channel. Is that how you think of it? Yeah, yeah, I would say so, because you can uh, have one or both. Most of uh, big channels have uh, chats too. So a channel is basically your blog. You can post mm-hmm. anything like videos mm-hmm. of yourself. And mm-hmm. now since this year, you can post stories too. It, it's, it's Instagram, but with more text mm-hmm. because it's more text based and people write a lot in there. You can make polls. You can ask your subscribers to choose something and you can go live and just tell them about your day and so on. And yeah, in the chat, you can have a discussion or as a subscriber, you can come and talk about what you've learned. So basically as for the Mandarin course, I go to the channel, I watch a video and then I have audios and little tasks I need to do. And then I make a recording and I send the recording to my teacher into the DMs. But there is a chat for everyone who's taken the course. And uh, I could write there too. Mm-hmm. Like introducing myself, maybe there is something interesting about Mandarin or some joke, uh, some funny video, I could uh, throw it in there. Mm-hmm. And sometimes course creators encourage you to, to talk about what's going on, maybe discuss some topic. And uh, I've taken a course for teachers and uh, they encouraged chatting with each other. And we had weekly recaps, a little reports about, oh, what's happened in your life? Or would you like to share any achievements? And it was very cool. And if, and we still talk even after uh, that course, we're still in touch. And if someone has a question, it's swiftly answered. 
And mm -hmm. it's funny too, because, oh, I have a student, I don't have the time. Who would like to take like this person or, uh, okay, my student has a daughter. I don't work with kids. Uh, who would like to take this kid? That would happen to me. Or, uh, oh guys, do you have uh, any tips? Uh, what's the best uh, um, business English uh, textbook? We need it uh, ASAP. Something like this. Yeah. Or what's the best channel? Or could you uh, give some channels on YouTube for uh, wine tasters? And I have a list and I come out and I'm like, here you go. <laughs> I, I throw it at them. That's yeah, funny. So nice. it's, it's a lot of, it sounds like you take a course, you are in a group and it sounds like you end up getting a lot of networking done. Yeah. And you maybe, I know you've mentioned before, like years later, you'll think, oh yeah, I took a telegram course with this guy and now I have something that I wanted to tell him. And you've got that contact there that you <laughs> do end up reusing quite a lot more. Whereas on the other side of things, I've taken courses like online, right? And you sign into mm -hmm. their website and you, maybe you post a question and who knows if it's going to get answered, who knows how often they check it. And there's no sense of community. People try, right? It's try, they try, but it's just, it's so removed because you got to go to this app to do the thing and you got to sign into this thing. And it's very insular. Whereas if I'm already using Telegram for everything else anyways, and if I'm not, I probably should be. Then boom, everything is already there. And I'm just like always a bit, a bit able to grow those connections and get the mm -hmm. feedback and maybe, like you said, make new friends and things like that. And I think you even have some you've mentioned for like your dance classes and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's probably a great way to make friends yeah. as well because you have shared interests. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So today I had a lesson with a student whom I actually met through my dance class. Yeah, she became my student and she brought two friends. So who uh, also became my student and uh, yeah, it, it's nice and it really works. And as for networking, like professionally, it also helps. I told you about a course for teachers and then I wrote about uh, my achievements and one of them was uh, like mastering Notion. And then they remembered me as that Notion girl. And mm -hmm. when someone else was making a course, she reached out to me and she was like, okay, I need someone to give uh, a guest lecture about Notion and I did. It was like a, a little uh, business opportunity for collaboration. Totally. Yeah, Speaking of guest lectures, yeah, very often, not just Notion, but one thing I love is to create community and putting people in touch with one another. And I think I've only just scratched the surface with Telegram and, and this is going to be a really big part of 2024 and after for me and all the teachers in our club because you've been so kind in sharing your knowledge all, previously about Notion, but now also about Telegram. So just to say, if anybody else is out there and thinking like, oh, here's a whole world that I know nothing about and I wish somebody could be with me and show me and answer my questions about these things, maybe this is something that you want to get into too so you can join our, our teachers club and also say that Margarita is not just the Notion girl. She's the everything girl. She does Telegram. She always tells us about the books that she's reading. And you're just, I want to go back to the idea of community again that Everybody in our group has so much to offer and it's such a, it's such a wonderful place to meet people in person synchronously. And we always, we can always, we know each other are available on offline, let's say asynchronously, and we support each other too. And you're saying too, that there's this whole thing on Telegram as well that most of us don't take advantage of. So again, I'm just beginning to scratch the surface of Telegram. I know that there's so much functionality there and things that I don't know. I'm learning bit by bit. And then we got both inspired. I think we could have this spiraling effect for each other of motivation. I think it was last week. We had yeah. to be, I think it was in office hours. And we got on the subject of swear words in different cultures and different languages and how we use swear words and things like that. And then that made me think, you know what? That's going to be the first Telegram course that I create. I'm going to create a course on how to pronounce and use swear words effectively in English and correctly in English. Because like when you're hot and you want to say this thing in this way, like it just undermines you when you don't, right? So I want to give people, mm -hmm. I want to empower people to be able to use swear words better. And so I thought, you know what, that's going to be my first Telegram course. So that's what we're working on. Tell us a little bit more about your course that you want to work on, how we can yeah. find out about that. And you also mentioned there's something else that we didn't really talk about is how to do feedback within a course. So maybe tell us what you're thinking about that. So uh, you inspired me to make a little like Telegram one-on-one -on -one course, one-on-one -on -one course for teachers, because I thought, oh, everyone knows that it's not useful knowledge, uh, not something to talk about. And then you had questions and I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I, I will make a, a little course, like how to start. 
And uh, yeah, and as soon as I finish, I, I will tell you. So probably by the time the, the podcast <laughs> airs, I will have finished. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I'll try. Yeah. I'm um, thinking, you were thinking like, oh yeah, this is all, this, like everybody knows this. This is like yeah. one-on-one. Well, most of us don't know the one-on-one stuff. And every time you mention a little thing, I think even when we say, oh, look, there's a video, but guess what? You can press that little A and then it transcribes the video for you blows our minds like every time there's these little tips that you think are intuitive we don't even know these things so yeah you creating a telegram course on how to teach on telegram is like yeah. perfectly what everybody needs yes exactly so yeah tell us more about that yeah so uh, i think i will just make some tips on how to start and like about uh, the functions and what i've seen as a, a learner what what works uh, more effectively what doesn't maybe some options because it's really a whole world and there are a lot of ways of using this app and there are a lot of like teachers communities you might want to reach out to maybe i will share a, a couple with teachers from other countries who, who might join those communities too and you can find someone to collaborate with and to cross promote each other or find uh, advertising opportunities because there is a whole set of rules of how that works. It doesn't work exactly as WhatsApp or Instagram and anything else really, but I think it's useful and uh, free or if we're talking about the premium, rather cheap instruments you could use. Yeah. yeah. Considering all the things, if you're a teacher anyways, and you're paying money for subscriptions, like all, I don't know, the subscriptions pile up. And Telegram is pretty cheap, it's super cheap actually for I think what you get out of that. I've already got the premium. And the reason, the one big reason is when I'm joining these groups of international people, like we said, like a lot, a lot of the rest of the world uses Telegram. So it could be in many different languages. The feature that I like most on the premium is it's got instant translation for all the messages. And I find that, oh, here's a access to a whole bunch of people that I would never, I would not even know what they're talking about. And here I can follow along. I, I can get ideas on style and things like that. And you're, you just get this insider view that you just otherwise couldn't, right? And you'd be just cut off from that too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I've already got a Telegram channel. You've got a Telegram channel. We're going to put, yeah. a, we're going to put both of those clearly in the show notes and we want people to join them. I think you, yours is free and open to the public, right? Yeah, it is. Uh -huh. Yeah, mine, yeah, mine is too. And then there's some, there might be some other ones because we didn't mention this, but you can have a public or a private channel too. So I yeah. imagine when you're talking about some of these courses, you get a special link and that's how you. Yeah, of course. So yeah. you don't, you don't want just anyone to join, but uh, sometimes it's funny because there are like chats of like Russian teachers, like Russian is a foreign language and there, there's always some Arabic guy who's like girls who will teach me for free. Uh, yes. I'd like to learn Russian. Or yeah, sure something like that. Kind of that kind of uh, experience is fairly common. I know on Discord, I get I get marriage proposals, I get cryptocurrency proposals, like all the time. It's just like par for the course for some of these on Instagram yeah. too. Yeah, you get a lot of that stuff too. So I think it's yeah. kind of unavoidable. But Telegram. Yeah, works. yeah. But okay, speaking about the premium feature, as of now they have this option: you can let only premium owners text you. Probably it would defeat the purpose of meeting a lot of new people, but yeah. if you're done with this, you could just like huh. switch, switch it on. And also I would recommend the mute button because if you're talking about teaching asynchronously yes. and your students potentially sending you stuff at 2 a.m., if you mute them, you're going to, you're going to sleep through it. It's going to be fine for you. But if you don't, you might wake up. You don't get notifications. Yeah, that's, I think, important on the teacher side and the creator side of those things yeah. about boundaries and yeah, not overdoing yeah. it and things like that. Because yeah, I can see how it, you could easily slip into just spending way too much time on this thing because now you're spreading it out rather than dedicating a certain amount of time. But again, to come back full circle, it depends on the person. It depends on the teacher. It depends on the student. What's right for you? I have the same experience. So I just joined a new Telegram group for this technology thing training that I'm mm -hmm. doing. And my God, there's like easily 300 messages a day. If I did not mute that, like I would just ping, ping, I'd be getting pinged all the time. So yeah, yeah. mute your channels too. And yeah. like you have over 500 channels that you're a part of, you can't possibly be paying attention to those things. So you have to be selective, I imagine, about that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So for today, I think we were, we wanted to talk about micro learning, check. We wanted to mm -hmm. talk about asynchronous learning and micro learning. 
and how we're using Telegram now for micro learning. Is there anything else that you wanted to say about Telegram for micro learning or anything about asynchronism or flipped classrooms or benefits to micro learning? Is there anything else that you wanted to mention? No, I wanted to mention another function on Telegram because we discussed the mute button, but also you can use delayed messages. So maybe like it's the other side of that coin. So maybe it's not your student doing stuff at 2 a.m. Maybe it's you and you don't want to wake, no, to wake the student up. Maybe they don't know how to use the mute button, so you don't want to risk it. And so you can just choose the time and the date when this message is going to go to your students and potentially, so if you have a course, which is not like a uh, tailor-made as I described earlier, but something you want to give to your students, like uh, everything you want to send them, you could just uh, set it up once and then it will just be sent uh, on certain dates at certain times. And so uh, you might prepare like videos or texts, what to do and just program it once and uh, forget about it. It will be sent later. And I think it's very useful instead of giving one task. So as we said, comparing one hour a week and say, okay, here's what we've done. And here's your homework mm -hmm. for the week. You can give tasks like every day yeah, and you can program them to, to be sent every day once. So yeah. maybe you do it for the whole week and then the student knows that, okay, like the tasks come out at 9 a.m. every day. Yes. And yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, they get used to seeing that and uh, you don't have to think about, oh, did I send it? Or did I not? So, mm -hmm. hey, yeah, I've, 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 that's gold right there. That's like a little extra golden nugget. A tip that you've given us is that, yeah, being able to schedule things to release in the future, fantastic. Because sometimes I get, I get like super focused and I'll do a whole bunch of things at once. And then, but I can't just post all of that at once, right? That's like a bombardment. So I have to remember, okay. This one, then this one tomorrow, then this one tomorrow, and keep the conversation going. And as we said too, like people like check things. It's a mm -hmm. form of social media too, in a way. And that and people get used to going and seeing, hey, what's new? What's new with uh, Margarita? What's new with Bianca? And seeing that's there, not just like a an onslaught of things and then nothing and then going dark for a while. So yeah, using that scheduling button is really key. And there's so many tricks too that you've been sharing with us in our teachers club. So if people want to be a part of that. You can join our club, our Accent Teachers Academy, and learn about some of these things. And actually, like we said, the things that people want to learn about, that's what we talk about, right? If somebody recently uh, wanted to start a newsletter, so we were talking about newsletters for a while, and then sometimes it's videos and filters and things like that. Like you just said today, oh, look, Zoom has a way you can add a beard if you want or something like that. And so we're always sharing those little tips on, based on what's interesting to us. We don't follow a set course mm -hmm. that somebody may or may not be interested in. And then mm -hmm. also, if somebody wants to learn more about Telegram, you're going to be having this course come out, Telegram 101 course for teachers. And we're going to put, we're going to put that, all the links down in the show notes below. But as for now, you said people can just DM you to get on the waiting yeah. list. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, we will put like my socials into the description. You can contact me on Instagram or my Telegram. So like, feel go. free to message me. You might inspire me to add something new into my course. <laughs> totally. We feed off of each other all the time. Uh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And so what we wanted to say in general is I think you wanted to say to really check out micro learning because it might change your life. That's what you yeah, said. yeah, absolutely. It really might change your life because you might, as a student, you might use uh, the time you couldn't use for learning because of like the time difference, or maybe you just have a little chance of time. So the lessons are one hour and you only have 15 minutes. It wouldn't work like that, like synchronously, but for asynchronous learning or for a short call, like of 15 minutes, it could be perfect and it would work and it would help you reach your goals somehow because in the perfect world of course we would have enough time to learn everything we want but unfortunately it's not like that we have to prioritize and try to find the time for things we really want to learn yeah yeah i think yeah time is, i'm surprised we didn't mention this earlier what's the main complaint that most of us have about our language learning or whatever it is like oh i have no time and this is a way to find time and make the time because then you only have to find little chunks of time rather than the whole hour mm -hmm. and then that's just one of the benefits i think that we talked about today yeah. so as usual thank you so much for coming on the podcast and thank you for being a real rock in our community we just love having you there so thanks again 
Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me and thanks for your lovely community. It's one of the highlights of my last year that I found you and it's uh, very beneficial for me both as a student as a teacher too. Oh, so, like, well, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, and I'm sure it's not the last podcast episode we'll do together, so we'll just say bye for now. Yeah. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye, guys. Yeah. Bye, bye. So thanks again for joining us today. Thanks again, Margarita, for coming today to share your knowledge with us. And thank you guys for listening in today. Like we said, check out microlearning. It might just change your life. Helpful in any way. Please subscribe and leave a review. It's actually really helpful to me. Now, before I go, I have two tasks for you to do. First, I want you to register and come to my free monthly masterclass. They're on the last Thursday of the month. In just one hour, you're going to master a specific American accent skill. For example, the TH sound or rhythm. The Zoom registration link actually changes each month. So the second and maybe more important thing I want to ask you to do is to sign up for my mailing list because you're going to get the registration link each month and you're going to get bonus materials before and after the masterclass that I only send to my email list subscribers. The email opt-in link is down in the show notes. Be sure to sign up for my mailing list and come to the monthly masterclass for free. I'm Bianca, your personal American accent coach, and I want you to know that your voice is your choice. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the show. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.